Strange Wills. Starring the distinguished Hollywood actor, Warren William. And featuring Marvin Miller and Loreen Tuttle with Howard Culver and an all-star Hollywood cast. Original music by Del Castillo. Dead men's wills are often strange. We cannot attempt to understand them or try to find the answers. We can but tell the story. This is Warren William bringing you the story East of Hudson's Bay. But first... And now back to Warren William as John Francis O'Connell in East of Hudson's Bay. If I spend my winters in sunny California or balmy Florida, well, <laughs> it's not without just cause, I can assure you. Once and only once, I had the very dubious pleasure of visiting a client east of Hudson's Bay. Oh, it wasn't a pleasure trip, believe me. Only the direst of circumstances made me go. It all started in the crispy month of October. It was one of those rare fall days, Indian summer, in fact, when the lovely, young, and headstrong Angela Nelson came into my office to see me. Just imagine, John, just imagine me falling heir to a 10,000-acre ranch. <laughs> it's the most thrilling thing that ever happened to me. Well, Angela, inheriting a ranch that size is about all that's left for you to get. Your grandfather gave you one fortune, then your father made you sole heir of his estate, and now your uncle comes through with a ranch. But there's a catch, Angela. There's a catch. A catch? Oh, you're fooling, John. Here it is down in black and white. Now, wait a minute. I'll read it to you. To Angela Nelson, my beloved niece, I devise and bequeath a parcel of land consisting of approximately 10,000 acres. Uh-huh. The interesting part is still to come, Angela. Remember, I wrote the will. All right, I shall continue. <laughs> Said tract of land is situated between the Leaf River on the north and the St. George River on the south in the province of Quebec. Suppose you tell me, young lady, if you have any idea where the Leaf River is. Why, it's in Quebec, of course. It says so right here. <laughs> Your education has been sadly neglected. You've never learned how big Quebec really is. Look, here's a map of Canada. Now then, let's... Find Leaf River. Hey, you're trying to find the North Pole. No, not at all. Oh, here it is. There. Where? See it? Perry must have used it as a jumping off place <laughs> on his way to the pole. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far, Angela, but you may rest assured that you won't die of heat prostration even in the middle of summer. Oh, you're being facetious. Look at all of the towns on the map around Re Leaf River. <laughs> people must live there. Oh, people live there, all right. Fur trappers, Indians, woodsmen. At least a dozen in every town, I'd say. Well, this is only October. October the 5th. Can't be too cold up there on Leaf River yet. I tell you what I want you to do for me. Order a team of huskies and a sled. No. Order a private plane. That's mm. it. Charter a plane for me. I want to see my ranch. I want to go to Leaf River tomorrow. Well, after all, it's your ranch, and I can't stop you from going. But promise you'll be back in two weeks, Angela. I don't want to have to go up there and dig you out of the snow. <laughs> I promise. All right. I'll order a plane to take you to, um, let's see. Here's a town called Luck to Flambeau. Sounds like red flannel shirts and he <laughs> An adventure east of Hudson's Bay. All thrown in for the price of one plane ticket. Oh, it's worth it. But watch out, young lady. <laughs> I've heard tales of those rugged French-Canadian woodsmen. Oh, John, you are old-fashioned, aren't you? <laughs> 
Men are men, no matter where you find them. You better read more of Kipling. Hmm, men are men, all right. But some men aren't as easy to handle as others. Aren't as easy to handle? Well, John, you've never seen Angela Nelson in action. <laughs> And Angela really went into action. Less than 48 hours after our conversation, she was in Quebec. As land commissioner, Miss Nelson, I can only tell you that you've picked out a rugged assignment. <laughs> but I can see that you're determined to make the trip to your uncle's property. So I've sent for the best guide east of Hudson's Bay. He'll be here any minute. Well, thank you, Commissioner McTavish. One thing about him, though, he hasn't much use for, well, shall we say... Women who neither toil nor spin. Oh, he wants them rough and ready, is that what you mean? <laughs> That's what I mean. But then Pierre is a man of the North Country. You'll be perfectly safe with him. Neither one of us will have to worry. My God, where is this commissioner? <laughs> Why he sent for Pierre Baptiste Leblanc this time of the day, huh? <laughs> come in, Pierre, come in. My God, I am in. Pierre, uh. this is Miss Nelson, Miss Angela Nelson. Oh, by God, commissioner. She's a pretty woman. Well, thank you. Thank you, Pierre. <laughs> Pierre, Miss Nelson is going to take a trip into the interior. She wants you to be her guide. Oh, oh she wants me to be her guide. Sacre bleu. Since when does the great Pierre Baptiste Leblanc, the finest trapper in all the North Country, act as nursemaid to, to such an enfant, such a child? What? No, no, Commissioner. I have more important things to do. Excuse me, please. Pierre, wait a minute. I want to speak to you alone. I'll wait outside here. Well, Pierre, uh, or shall I say Pierre Baptiste Leblanc, greatest trapper of the whole North Country, we are alone, the enfant and you. Oh, 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 do not take offense, mademoiselle. What I say about, well, about the nursemaid, only you are so small... Too lovely to go into the forest. I would have to carry you like a papoose. <laughs> Pierre, did you ever hear of the Vikings? <laughs> the Vikings? No, mademoiselle. Well, the Vikings, Pierre, came to this country when there were no people. They were big men, Pierre, bigger even than you. Bigger than me? <laughs> Pierre Baptiste Leblanc is six feet four inches and he weighed 260 pounds. And they were braver than you, Pierre, because they had no guns, only spears. These Vikings had only spears to kill the caribou and the bear? Oh, you joke, mademoiselle. I tell you the truth, Pierre. And one more thing. They respected their women because they too were brave. And afraid of nothing. By God, I would like to meet one of these women to kill Caribou and Bear with a spear. Oh, sacre bleu, that is the woman for Pierre Baptiste Leblanc. You have met one, Pierre. I am a descendant of the Vikings. You? Yes. Oh, sacre bleu, you are but a, a what you say, little fawn, afraid of the shadows, no? I'm going to show you, Pierre, that size is of little importance. That I can do anything you can do. Now then, you are going to go with me and we're starting tomorrow morning. Starting tomorrow morning? Now here's $200. Oh. Buy what's necessary for the trip. If you need more, I'll be at the home of Commissioner McTavish. Is everything clear? By gar. Maybe Pierre Baptiste Leblanc is wrong. Maybe you are what you call Viking girl, uh, yeah? Uh -huh. Maybe you are brave like French Canadian, eh? Huh? Ho oh, ho! I find out. I find out. You like the woods, mademoiselle? For three days now you have seen nothing but pine trees, the swift river, the caribou and the elk. Oh, it's wonderful, Pierre, wonderful. And tomorrow morning we reach the leaf river. How long you stay? Oh, only for a day or two. I promise to be back in the States in two weeks. Uh. Oh, mademoiselle, smells the air, filled with the smell of pine and balsam. Soon will come big snow, then Pierre will set the traps. What do you catch, Pierre? Oh, uh, mink, northern sable, ermine, the weasel. All of them live here on the right forest. But don't you ever get lonesome, Pierre? Out here alone all winter? Oh, no, no, mademoiselle. I have my cabin, my snowshoe, my gun, and I sing. Ha, 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 I sing. Even the deer, she ran away when she hear Pierre Baptiste Leblanc singing in the morning. 
what does Mamselle do on the cold morning, eh? Well, I follow the sun, Pierre. Huh? When winter comes, I pack my bag and go to California. I sing, too, but... But it's not like this, Pierre. At the end of the first two weeks of Angela's absence, I received a wire stating that two more weeks were necessary to complete her mission. Well, it was still Indian summer, at least in the city. But when the two additional weeks passed and no further word came from Angela, it bothered me. Yes, it's cold tonight. Soon the snow will come, Mademoiselle. We must go back tomorrow. You know, Pierre, I really hate to think of going back. Hmm? It's been so wonderful, so wonderful. I've learned to tell direction by the stars, to broil caribou steaks over an open fire, <laughs> even to mend my own clothes. Oh, uh, but now things will change with the winter. The wolves will come out of the forest for food. The snow, she will pile up ice on the roof of this cabin. Well, mademoiselle, I will go to my cabin now. We must get plenty of sleep. We start back for Lac du Flambeau when the sun come up. All right, Pierre. Bye, girl. I say you have been a brave girl. These Vikings are good peoples. Almost as good as the French Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> good night, mademoiselle. Good night, Pierre. <coughs> oh, what's that? Oh, it's a wolf. The winter she has come. The wolf? Oh, Pierre, they frightened me. Frightened you? Oh, ho, 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 you joke, mademoiselle. You say the Vikings are afraid of nothing. <coughs> well, I go now. Good night. Oh, no, 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 huh? no. Please don't go yet, Pierre. <coughs> oh, oh, there's the door. Oh, oh, Pierre, I'm... I... Oh, hold me. Hold me tight. Oh, there, there. <laughs> Little Angela. Big, strong Pierre holds you tight in his arms. Like this. Don't let go, Pierre. Don't let go. Uh, wait, wait. First I chase a wolf away. Then I come back and hold you some more. Huh? Oh, sacre bleu. This wolf is one fine animal. Sacre bleu. It's enough. Go away, wolf. Or Pierre Baptiste Leblanc, the greatest trapper in all of Canada, will kill you. Okay. Pierre, it is not wolf <laughs> call. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the wolf is gone. Uh, now, we come close again, huh, Angela? Just a minute, Pierre Baptiste Blanc. What? Uh, what is... What is uh... I heard that, that wolf speak to you. Speak to me? Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> this Viking girl, she hears a wolf speak to Pierre. <laughs> you despicable creature. <laughs> you... <laughs> you... <laughs> oh, stop beating my chest, Mamsel. Maybe you make hurt on Pierre. <laughs> you thought you'd trap me into your arms. Just like you do your weasels. You... You... There! Oh... Okay, okay. I have Indian friend make wolf call, so you come to my arms. <laughs> okay. But, well, Pierre Baptiste Leblanc love you, mademoiselle. Only he don't know the word to tell you. So I fix the wolf to make what you call the proposal for me. <laughs> well, of all, I should have known... Well, Mr. LeBlanc, you can go back to your cabin right now. I won't be afraid of any more of your wolves. And I'll be ready to leave at sunrise. All right, mademoiselle. Pierre, he make one big mistake. He think Angela love him too. Good night. Who does that big palooka think he is? What a sucker I am, rushing to his arms when I heard a wolf... He's nothing but a drugstore Romeo wearing a stocking cap. <laughs> oh, at it again, is he? This time I'll fix it. <laughs> One pail of water for a smart alec. All right, Mr. Wolf, you ask for it. Ah! Ah! It's real! Ah! 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 Angela! Angela! Oh, look, a 
Jim, Jim. She's one big timber wolf. Oh, by God, she hurt you. No. Oh. No, Pierre, I'm all right. Frightened, I guess. Oh, Pierre. Oui, Angela. Oh. Would you please hold me for a minute again? Just like you did before. Hold you. Hold you. Oh, Pierre Baptiste Leblanc will hold you like he's old no other woman in his whole life. By God, that is a promise. Part two of East of Hudson's Bay, written by Ken Crepine and directed by Robert Webster Light, will follow in just a moment. But first, here is a brief message from your announcer. And here again is Warren William as John Francis O'Connell in East of Hudson's Bay. After a month had gone by and no further message came from Angela Nelson, I took matters into my own hands. After all, there was a limit. I telephoned Commissioner McTavish and told him I'd fly to Lac de Flambeau to help him organize a searching party. Things had gone far enough. Meanwhile, Pierre and Angela were having their troubles. Blizzard never stop. It's been snowing for three days. Uh, she won't stop until the snow is six, ten, maybe twelve feet high. Now I am late with my traps. The mink, the otter, the beaver, they will all run around the snow and say, Where is this great Pierre Baptiste Leblanc? Ho ho! They will think I'm dead. Here I am only sick with love. Oh, Pierre, listen. Ever since that night in the cabin, when the wolf came... When you asked me to hold you in my arms, Angela, huh? Yes. That didn't mean that... Well, Pierre, it's this way. Just because you held me in your arms doesn't mean that I'm in love with you. No. You're not in love with me. But I kissed you, you kissed me too. By God, what monkey business is this? Oh, call it a romantic interlude. Call it a... Weak moment, if you will. But, Pierre, don't you see? I have a social position to remember. What would my friends say if they knew that... that... well, that I was in love with the North Woodsman? Don't you understand? No, I do not understand. To me, when Pierre Baptiste Leblanc kisses a woman, she's his woman. Angela, we will go to the Jesuit mission at Lac de Flambeau and get married, No. No, Pierre, no. I must go back home. We can't fall in love, Pierre. I'm sorry for both of us. Now, suppose you get me back as quickly as you can. And then you can trap your weasels, huh? No, no, no. So that is it, huh? So Pierre Baptiste Leblanc is not good enough for you, huh? By God, okay, I get you back. I get you back to Lac du Flambeau if I have to carry you all the way. Well, while all this was taking place, I was over a hundred miles away, trying to keep warm in Mr. McTavish's home. 
The weather had softened up a bit. It was only 30 below. Mild, he called it. Well, John, we'll start out in the morning. How do we travel? By dog sled? Exactly. We're taking two Indian guides. Be there in three days. The snow is as slick as glass. We'll make good time. You won't be able to make it any too fast to suit me. <laughs> Walking or riding a hundred miles when it's 30 or 40 degrees below zero isn't exactly my idea of fun. so fast I can't see where I'm going. My gosh, he's blowing bad. Wait, I call you. Oh, would you please? These snowshoes, they're so clumsy. Now, then, up you go. I carry you like Indian squaw carrying papoos. <laughs> <laughs> Just like I tell you in commissioner's office. <laughs> How much further is it to Lac de Flambeau? Oh, I think only about 10 miles. We make it sometime today. Pierre. Oui, mademoiselle. I'm sorry I spoke as I did the other night. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Oh, he's all right, mademoiselle. Pierre should know better than to think you marry big bum like him. Oh, it isn't that, that I think you're a big bum, Pierre. It's... I mean... Oh, well, skip it. What do you do with ranch, mademoiselle? Sell him? I don't know yet. Oh, it is a beautiful place, isn't it, Pierre? Pine trees, river, two lakes... 12 feet of snow. But spring will come someday, even up here, won't appear. Oh, I love the snow, mademoiselle. To me, it's like God's blanket of forgiveness. It covers over all nature so it can sleep and grow strong again. You will come back here again, Pierre. Oh, just so soon I take you to Lac de Flambeau, I will get my traps, my dogs, and come back to Leaf River. Won't you get lonesome? Get lonesome? <laughs> Pierre Baptiste get lonesome, oh no, mademoiselle. Now, I have got so many things to remember. Such as? Like the night I have Indian make wolf call to frighten you. <laughs> it was very, very funny. <laughs> well, it wasn't funny when the real wolf came. No, by gosh. Uh, wait. Wait, Pierre, your dogs. Listen. Someone come on dog sled, maybe look for us. Oh, Pierre. Oh, then you won't have to carry me anymore. Just when I was beginning to like it, too. By God, I'm happy to see you, John. And you, too, Mr. McTavish. By God. You all right, Angela? Oh, by God, I say I am. <laughs> Got caught in the blizzard, though. That's why we're late, isn't it, Pierre? Oh, I'm very, very sorry about this thing. But we get back, okay, eh, mademoiselle? We thought you were snowbound, and Mr. O'Connell insisted we come to your rescue. I hope, Angela, that you enjoyed this grand and glorious frozen north. Oh, it's been wonderful, John. Just wonderful every single minute. But at least for my sake. Next time, pick out a place like, well, like Palm Springs or Tampa. You know how cold it is? Only about 30 below. I told John it was still mild, but he doesn't seem to believe me. Well, Commissioner, my job, she's true. The young lady, she's safe. Now I go to town, get my traps, and suck. I blow, I come back in early. I am late to catch the weasels. <laughs> Thank you, Pierre. Thank you. We'll see you at Lac de Flambeau. Well, Pierre, <laughs> knowing Miss Nelson as I do, you must have had your hands full. Oh, no, monsieur. <laughs> She's one fine girl. Just like uh, what you call... A vi Viking. Ah. Remember, Pierre? The Viking girl who was afraid of the wolf. The big bad wolf. It said, okay. Next afternoon, back at McTavish's house, we were all sitting around the huge open fireplace watching the last of the blizzard wearing itself out. Tomorrow, John, I'm going to take you out so that you can shoot your moose. But how about that caribou you promised me? Aye, and that too. You won't have to walk far, either. This time of year, they come right into town. And then it's back to sunny California. Well, that sounds a little reluctant, Angela. Seems to me you've adjusted yourself to this rugged country awfully fast. Oh-ho! Yippee! It's Pierre! 
<laughs> He's come with his dog team. He must be going back to Leaf River. Well, I'll let him in. Come in, come in, Pierre. Oh, thank you, Monsieur Commissioner. Hello, Monsieur O'Connell, Mademoiselle. Pierre, glad to see you again. My heavens, you look as if you were going someplace. Pack on back, dog team and sled outside. I start out again for Leaf River. Oh, you're going back again so soon, Pierre? I start now. By night, I will be deep in the forest. The blizzard, she's over. And you've come to say goodbye? To say goodbye. I... I hope you have many happy memories of the great forests, the Leaf River, and your little cabin in the woods. Yes. Yes, thank you, Pierre. And I wish you many happy moments, too. When you're trapping your weasels and shooting timber wolves. Well, Pierre, good trapping. You'll be gone until spring, I suppose. When the ice melts on the rivers, the trees put on their coat of buds, I will come back to Lac du Flambeau. Well, au revoir. Pierre Baptiste Leblanc is ready for that grand aventure. Goodbye, Pierre. And thank you once more for taking care of Angela. Goodbye, Pierre. Goodbye to all of you. Bon voyage. Good, Good luck, Pierre. Pierre. Oh, away we go. <laughs> well, there he goes. Handsome fella, isn't he? Goodbye, John. Goodbye, Mr. McTavish. Angela, Angela, what are you doing? Where are you going? Back to God's country. I'm going back with Pierre if he'll take me. Oh, it's love, John. True love. Pierre! Pierre, wait for me, Pierre, wait. I'm going with you. <laughs> Warren William will be back in just a moment to tell you the rest of the story of East of Hudson's Bay. But first, here is a brief message from your announcer. And here again is Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. Evidently, love can't be regulated by climate. Angela Nelson found her love in the frigid north, east of Hudson's Bay. She and Pierre were married in the little Jesuit mission at Lac de Flambeau, and a few hours later, they started out for Leaf River and her ranch to spend a nice, quiet honeymoon. Today, one year later, there is a little Pierre Baptiste Leblanc who shows every promise of becoming the greatest trapper in all the North Country. At least that's what Angela tells me. And by God, I think she's right. Don't you? Next week, we have a story for you straight from Hollywood. <laughs> well, I mean, as straight as anything can come from this fabulous city of make-believe. It's the story of a man a young, handsome, and dashing motion picture star who wrote his autograph for a beautiful young lady. Now, we know, of course, that signing one's autograph in Hollywood is an everyday circumstance, but not this one. No sooner was Peter Layton's signature down on that piece of paper than things began happening. We call this intriguing story Autograph Girl. This is Warren William inviting you to listen again next week. Strange Wills is a Telaways feature produced in Hollywood. Any similarity between names used on this broadcast and those of living persons is purely coincidental. <laughs>